Now let's look at uh, the two major methods that have been used to evaluate the firm, valuation mechanisms for a firm, the price to earnings multiple and an asset valuation mechanism. The asset valuation mechanism is purely the balance sheet based mechanism, the financial statements based mechanism where we are simply looking at those assets that are present in the balance sheet, those assets that are measurable. So there are a few assets that get automatically omitted from this list. The internally generated goodwill is typically uh, omitted. The, the brand valuation is going to be omitted. The human capital value is going to be omitted. Any other specific skills that are possessed by the staff which don't make an entry into the financial statement, they get omitted by the asset valuation approach. And uh, the, this balance sheets are typically uh, prepared based on the various assumptions and the estimates that are typically taken by the management which could differ significantly from company to company. Which means the value of the firm when I am using this asset valuation mechanism could very well be tampered and it is heavily dependent on the assumptions and estimates that are provided by the management. So in a large number of cases, uh, this, could, uh, this could result in a value which is substantially lower compared to the price to earnings kind of a mechanism. But generally, when a company, when the typical uh, business is getting sold to someone, the existing owner is getting out of the business and a new owner is replacing, as it is I am selling the business, then probably the asset valuation mechanism is much more appropriate. Whereas, when I am looking at uh, the price to earnings ratio, P by E, is a measure of the market price for every one unit of earning the company has generated. So this when I am multiplying it with the future anticipated profit, this is going to give us the anticipated price for this firm for the future. So there is uh, not just the current earning of the company, we are even considering the future earning potential of the firm. So future earning potential, there is an effective discounting of all the future earnings back to the NPV. And but again, how much the, this is also influenced heavily by the accounting policies, the estimates that are being used to arrive at this number, because a lot of elements like depreciations and provisions, they are all heavily backed by various assumptions and estimates, revenue recognition mechanism, wherever uh, lots and lots of accounting uh, standards are being used, they give rise to some amount of uh, estimates and uh, assumptions uh, to go into the building of the financial statements. So the final future profits that are going to come up, they may be uh, biased to some extent uh, based on the estimates and the assumptions and the accounting policies involved. But otherwise, it is more and more theoretically sound compared to the asset valuation mechanism because at least these uh, details like this are typically not omitted from the calculation. Right? Uh, at least the omissions don't exist whereas in asset valuation mechanism, there is a possibility of some of the values need to be omitted. So, I mean, in a comparative note, we could very well see the price to earnings mechanism of valuation of uh, a security is much more uh, appropriate and relevant compared to the asset valuation mechanism. All right.